Thank you. Good morning. I'm Warda Ashraf. Um, I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Arlington. The work I'm going to present is uh, mostly done by my PhD student, Nithya Nair, so I'm just taking the credit. Um, and Nithya is supervised by myself and Professor Shah. And um, I'm going to show the application of bio-based nanofibers to improve the uh, performance of cement-based composites. So specifically, I'm going to talk about cellulose nanofibers. Uh, so these fibers are produced from um, wood sources uh, through mechanical pulping. Now, this is actually one of the most abundant biopolymer on Earth, so it's very easily available. Uh, there are some advantages of these cellulose nanofibers, and one of the major advantages is that it has reactive surface area, so we can functionalize and we can modify these fibers for our application. And this is, I'm here just showing the, uh, the molecular structure of cellulose nanofibers. And in our previous work, uh, we have already showed that cellulose nanofiber, just a small dosage, can significantly improve the mechanical performance. Uh, significantly, uh, by that I mean, if we add 0.1% or 0.05%, the flexural extent can be increased by almost 50 to 70%. Compressive extent at the earlier stage, it can be a little bit reduced, but at the longer, uh, uh, after longer curing duration, it actually improves. So for this presentation, I'm not going to focus that much on the mechanical performance, but I'll mostly talk about the durability performance. Specifically, I will show how the CNF um, can affect our cement hydration process, how it interacts with artificial pore solutions, and how we can use that to improve uh, the resistance of cementitious composites against sulfate and also against alkali silica reaction. Here is our experimental setup. Um, so we are using cellulose nanofiber in a very small dosage from 0 to 0.3 percent by weight of cement. Um, 0.3 percent was almost maximum for us because for a higher dosage, the workability will drop. We have used two types of cellulose nanofiber. LCNF is produced from um, unbleached wood pulp. That means it has lignin in it, so we are calling it LCNF. DCNF is produced from bleached wood pulp, so we are calling it delignified cellulose nanofibrils. For the durability test, we mostly follow the STMA standard, so I'm not showing the aggregate ratio or the uh, water to binder ratio here. So this is how the cellulose nanofibers looks like. So this is just in centimeter scales. This one is the lignin containing, so that's why it has this brownish color. Um, and in the nano scale, this is how the fibers will look like. Um, so it's, it's, the fiber will be entangled a little bit uh, for both type of cellulose. Okay, so first we'll just briefly talk about the effect on the cement hydration. The primary reason we looked into the hydration because, um, because there are past studies which reported that if we have lignin in our uh, system, it actually delays cement hydration. But in this case, we are just monitoring heat of hydration with different dosage of DCNF and LCNF, and essentially we are showing that within this early stage, there is no significant delay effect, so it doesn't change um, our setting time at all. In terms of compressive extent, again, this is just 28 days compressive extent. As I mentioned, that at the early stage or 28 days, cellulose doesn't have significant effect on the compressive extent at the after the longer curing duration, we see the benefit here. But I'm just showing to, um, uh, just to point out that 0.3% dosage, even at that point, it kind of started agglomerating and the strength was actually going down. So 0.1% is kind of suitable dose for us. And this is before exposure. Uh, next, I'll talk about how CNF interacts with uh, cement pore solution. So for this one, we just prepared artificial cement pore solution. There are chemical compositions we can use to prepare that. And after that, we put CNF film within the pore solution, and we monitored what is happening with cellulose and also what is happening with the pore solution at different temperature. The reason we did this test because Unlike carbon nanofibers or anything like that, cellulose nanofiber is known as a biodegradable material. So in nature, it's actually it's supposed to degrade eventually. And in cement, we have high pH, so we wanted to know how the cellulose fiber going to behave. 
Uh, so for this one, we essentially used FTIR. So FTIR help us to understand how the cellulose uh, molecule is arranged, and we can actually differentiate the inter and intra hydroxyl bonds. By monitoring that, we can actually understand if the cellulose is degrading or what is happening with that. So uh, that's what we did. We collected the FTR spectra for cellulose exposed to pore solution up to 120 days, so almost like four months. And we monitored the ratio of intra versus in interhydroxyl uh, bonds. What we are reporting here is that essentially cellulose nanofibers is getting degraded in cement pore solution. Because of that degradation, we are getting higher amount of hydroxyl bonds. So there is an outcome of this. Uh, because of this, this degradation, it forms more hydroxyl bonds, which is negatively charged, and because of that, it can actually absorb sodium and potassium ions from the pore solution. So this total mechanism, this is known as alkaline hydrolysis of cellulose nanofibers. And essentially, we are showing that this is biodegradable, that's true, but during this degradation process, it will continue to absorb alkali ions. In one of our previous work that is also published, we also showed that uh, addition of the cellulose nanofibers, it also reduces the concentration of calcium hydroxide, not CSH, only the calcium hydroxide, because it can also bind the positively charged calcium ions. Um, so essentially, we are showing that once we add these fibers, we'll have the lower concentration of calcium, sodium, and potassium. Now, these ions are known to affect the durability performance or the long-term performance of our cement-based composite. And this is the reason why we wanted to examine like what happens in terms of durability performance once we add the cellulose fibers. So next I'll just move on to our uh, ESTMA standard test. So first one is a sulfate attack. Just a quick reminder, so here I'm talking about external sulfate attack. What happens is that if we put our concrete in, a, in an environment where we have high sulfate concentration, sulfate will get into our system, it will react, uh, and it will form gypsum, and it will form a trinkite, it will start expanding, we'll lose cohesion, so our concrete will start uh, this type of spalling uh, type of failure. Traditionally, we can use uh, type 5 cement to avoid this damage. In this work, we wanted to see if we are still using type 1 cement with cellulose fiber, will it help to reduce the sulfate damage? So for that one, we have used STMA standard C1012 test method. Um, we did this one with sodium sulfate, and also we repeated the test with magnesium sulfate because they have different mechanism. Um, we monitored the expansion of the bar samples. We also monitored the strength variation of the samples. And finally, we did some microstructural work to understand the mechanism of what is happening after uh, putting the samples in sulfate. So the length is uh, increasing for all of the samples. The black one is the control batch. Uh, but essentially, after adding the cellulose sample uh, in the matrix, cellulose samples showed lower expansion. After six months, we showed that cellulose containing sample can reduce the expansion by 30 to 50 percent. We are mostly focusing on 0.1 percent dosage because uh, hard dosage actually didn't give us good um, compressive strength at the beginning. Similar thing in terms of compressive strength. So before exposure, I showed that the cellulose containing sample can have a little bit lower strength after 28 days without any exposure condition. And here, after six months of sulfate exposure, um, strength for all of the composites actually dropped. But in case of control batch, that means the batch without any cellulose had the lowest strength. The cellulose containing samples had uh, nearly 40% higher strength for um, this exposure condition. Similar test we did with magnesium sulfate, and also we got improved performance once we add the cellulose nanofiber. So then we wanted to understand the mechanism because it's a fiber and also it's a kind of reactive nanomaterial, so exactly what is happening. So we did quite a bit of, uh, for all of the sample, we did the thermal analysis. Also, we did the extra diffraction. From this, we determined the amount of calcium hydroxide there, the amount of gypsum there, and also the amount of ettringite. And we showed that uh, the batch is containing the cellulose nanofiber. They have the lesser amount of ettringite and also lesser amount of gypsum formation. At the same time, we did the X XRF, extra fluorescence, to check if uh, cellulose nanofiber, because of that, if the sulfate diffusion within the matrix, if it was reduced or not. 
From this, we confirmed that all of the matrix, they had exactly almost the same amount of sulfate. So sulfate was getting there, but it was just not reacting the way it would, uh, it would react in a traditional matrix. In addition to that, because it's a nanofiber, it has a crack bridging effect. So the total benefit that we see is, is uh, because of the two aspects. Number one is a crack bridging effect. Number two is it's suppressing the amount of gypsum and the etringite formation. So this one was about uh, sulfur damage. Next, we looked into the alkali silica reaction. And here we have used uh, ASMC1260 test method. Um, and we have used sodium borosilicate as the reactive type of aggregate. Um, and we prepare the bar sample, put it in sodium hydroxide solution, keep it at 80 degrees Celsius. The standard requires us to measure up to 16 days, the expansion. And in this case, the effect of cellulose was much more visible. Uh, so this black one here is a control batch, and um, the standard has a limit, like up to 0.2% expansion. So this is with sodium borosilicate, so definitely the expansion is uh, above that. Uh, so, but once we add the cellulose nanofiber, the expansion was reduced by almost 90%. Uh, so this uh, standard requires us to measure for 16 days, but after the test, we actually kept the sample there. We wanted to see what happens in the long run. And after one year, we kind of confirmed that our control batch, the alkali silica reaction due to that, it keep expanding. But once we have cellulose nanofiber, even like a really a small dosage, like 0.05% or 0.1%, the total expansion due to the alkali silica reaction was reduced by almost like 99% for some patches. Um, the benefit, again, we, uh, as I showed in the beginning, that it's the alkaline hydrolysis process of cellulose. It continues to degrade, and during the degradation process, it continues to capture all the sodium and potassium ion. So we got the benefit of a significant reduction in alkali silica reaction. Uh, the last durability test we did, uh, atmospheric carbonation. So the, uh, the, I think the mechanism is kind of almost well known. So if we have the concrete structure with, due to the atmospheric CO2, it will diffuse from carbon and the pH will drop and our reinforcement can become more vulnerable to corrosion due to the pH drop. Um, and we wanted to see if cellulose will help in that case. There is no standard test method, so we have our custom carbonation setup, and then we did the phenolphthalein test uh, to understand the CO2 diffusion. But in this case, actually, cellulose did not uh, uh, did not provide any any consistent data. The conclusion um, was cellulose can, in fact, increase the carbonation of the batches, and I think it's because of the fibers helping in the CO2 diffusion. So not good for this type of matrix, but it can help us to increase the CO2 sequestration for other type of alternative materials that will eventually look into that. So that's uh, all the, the experimental data that I have for you today. And the essential conclusion here is that cellulose nanofiber, we have seen it, it can improve the mechanical performance. But one of the major effects is that it can significantly improve the durability performance against both sulfate and also alkali silica reaction. The, the advantage against alkali silica reaction was much more prominent. We tried do, uh, two types of cellulose nanofiber. Cellulose nanofiber produced from lignin um, containing wood pulp. It kind of showed better performance uh, to us, and we believe this is because we get better workability when the cellulose nanofiber has a little bit of lignin in it. And we showed that just the 0.1% dosage, uh, dosage is good enough to achieve these benefits. So that's all I have for you today. Um, thanks to our, our sponsoring agency, that's USDA P3 Nano. And um, thank you very much for your attention. I'll be happy to answer if you have any questions.